In this video we're going to continue our study of set theory by looking at set operators, which are ways to combine two sets to make another one. So we'll begin with union and intersection. If you've got two sets A and B, then the union of A and B, which we write like this, is defined to be the set of all things X such that X is in A or X is in B. And the intersection of A and B, which we write like this, is defined to be the set of all things X such that X is in A and X is in B. And you'll notice that we've defined these using the logical notation we developed in chapter one on logic. That's going to be useful to us because it'll let us use things like the logical equivalences we proved there to prove things about sets. You'll see us do that over the next couple of videos. So let's give some examples of union and intersection to begin with. So starting with union, if I have, for example, one, two, and I take the union of this set with the set containing three, then the resulting set has all the things which are in A in the first set or in the second set. So it would consist of one and two and three. Okay, on the other hand, if we take something like one and two, and we union that with the set two, three, okay, again, this is the set of all things which are in the first set or in the second set. So again, the elements are exactly the same as before, one and two and three. Moving on to intersections, if we take, let's say one, two, intersect two, three, then this set is defined to be all the things which are in both of those sets. So the only thing which is in both of those sets is the number two. So this is two. And let's take a slightly different example. Let's take one, two and intersect that with three, four. Okay, this time there are no elements in common between those two sets. So the intersection then doesn't have any elements. That is, the intersection is the empty set. So it's quite common when we're thinking about sets and set operations to draw what are called Venn diagrams to represent the sets and the operations. So the way a Venn diagram works is you draw a blob or a circle for each of the sets involved. So let's say we had, here is my blob for the set A and I'll label it like this and I'll draw my set B like this. There's my set B. And then the intersection of A and B would be the things which are in common between A and B. So we usually think of the blob I drew for A as having its interior represent the elements of A and the interior of the red blob I drew for B representing the elements of B. So the elements of A intersect B will be the things where that overlaps. So this shaded area here, that would be A intersect B. On the other hand, if we wanted A union B, we should simply color in the whole thing. So let me draw a version of that. If I have my set A here, and if I have my set B like this, so that is the B then the union of A and B will be everything which is in either A or B. So my blue shaded area here is A union B. And it can be handy to draw diagrams, especially when you've got a more complicated configuration like this to try and understand what's going on with the sets you're working with. So let's take the next two set operations that I want to define here. So first of all, the set difference between two sets A and B, which we write like this, is defined to be the set of all things in A which are not in B. So before I go on and talk about the second definition, let's draw a Venn diagram for that. So we will have a set A like this. There is my set A. Uh, we will take a set B like this. And this time, the set of all things in A which are not in B, well, that would be everything here, which was in A, but not in the intersection between A and B. 
so here this shaded area here is a set difference b or sometimes people will say a take b so i'm going to write that down because it's so common so a take b is also called a take b as well as the set difference of a and b okay so let's have a example with some numbers in it as well just to see what's going on here so if we have our let's say one two set difference with two three this set is the set of all things which are in the first of those which are not in the second so that's just one on its own because one is the only element which is in the first but not in the second on the other hand if i did something like one two take three four then this time well this time we get the same set we started off with because you don't have to throw out any elements there is nothing which is in the first set which was also in the second so we just left with the first set we started off with and finally let's try one two and we will take the set difference with zero one two three so this time there are no things which are in the first set and which are not in the second so this time we will get the empty set there are no elements of this set which are not also in this set the next definition then was the complement of a set and actually really this is just the same definition as the first one the same definition as for set difference but in a slightly different way however the terminology is so common that it's worth me defining it here so if you have a set a which is a subset of a set omega then ac so a um, with a subscript c which is called the complement of a in omega is the set of all things in omega which are not in a so of course we can rewrite this we've just seen the set difference definition so we can rewrite this in terms of set difference this is omega set difference a now complements very commonly used when you're talking about like a lot of sets which are a subset of some big kind of universe set and so the picture that people tend to draw for the complement is they will say um, here is some big set omega so we'll call this whole thing here omega and this set a was a subset so we'll take uh, a to be something like this inside here and then the complement of a in omega would be everything that's in omega which was not in a so let's shade that in it's everything which is in omega and which is not in a okay that's the set difference and the set complement so the final thing i want to define in this video is size or cardinality the size or cardinality of a set x which we write like this with vertical lines like a absolute value symbol is the number of distinct elements it has okay distinct is important here right the size or the cardinality of one two three two uh, pause the video what's the answer okay i hope you did it um so i mean the number of distinct elements is three here right because you've got two in there twice remember that one two three two is equal to the set one two three and to the set three two one for that matter anyway the number of distinct elements in there is three so that set has size three uh, a couple of other examples if you have something like uh, the set containing the set containing one uh, what do you think the size of that is well, of course the answer is one because there's only one element uh, let's look at a slightly more confusing example so the set containing the set containing one and two 
Oops, missing a bracket there, that's better. Again, this is size one. This set there has one element, which is the set containing one and two. So it's got size one. Uh, the empty set, the size of the empty set is zero. There are no elements in the empty set, so it's got zero distinct elements and so on. So the size or the cardinality mean the same thing, which is the number of distinct elements of the set that you're talking about. And as a bit of vocabulary, we say a set is finite if it's got zero elements or one element or two elements or three elements or any natural number of elements. So all of the sets we've seen on this, um, on this slide are finite sets. Sets which don't have a natural number of elements are called infinite. So examples of infinite sets would be the natural numbers. Remember in Math 5 that means 0, 1, 2 and so on. Uh, Z, the integers, which is the set of all positive or negative whole numbers. Uh, the set of real numbers. The set of rational numbers. The set of complex numbers. Those things are all infinite sets.